Hello everybody and welcome back to Mass Effect 2 Legendary Edition where I have been thinking and I think I will probably get 100% in the systems like I want but I do not know if I will do all of the little side missions. There are some, I think there's a couple N7 ones that I might do. These ones. I'll have, I meant to look it up. I should check and see if any of these do, because some of these, some of these side missions do affect the next game, at least a little bit, right? And it's nice to have. Um, and maybe I'll just finish them kind of in my off time at some, well not my off time, but like, um, on my own time, I guess. Um, cause yeah, this is, it's a little excruciating, honestly. And I don't know if it's something that everybody's going to want to see. Some of them are kind of cool, but some of them are not, so... Yeah. <laughs> I could just do a quick montage of the hours I would spend doing it, but for right now, we are going to go do Overlord. And really quick, let me do something. Okay, really quick, I just did double check. Um, for those of you, if we're, we're going to do Overlord, right? Um, and this one is one of the most... One of, I think it is the most sort of like controversial or difficult one to get through in, of all the Mass Effect series, honestly. Um, I will say the trigger warnings now, and I will try to remember to put them in the description since I'm editing these frantically probably on a Monday. I don't know if I'll be able to get the trigger warnings out, but the trigger warnings are uh, abuse of an autistic individual, implied rape, and an off-screen suicide. So, um any of those would bother you rightly then like excessively you know if you have any like legitimate triggers for that i don't know i'm probably not saying it very well but I'm, there you go those are the trigger warnings if you have issues with any of those uh the next couple episodes there may be something to skip and i will be sure to indicate it's overlord dlc in the title uh like i i usually do when i'm playing a dlc i'll do like the title of the video and then like the subtitle essentially of or like the title of the game and then the title of the dlc right next to it so we're gonna go do that, but it is, it is a longer one too. This is an actual like, like DLC, it's a couple hours long, I want to say, but I could be totally misremembering. I'm just gonna look at this really quick. Man, a lot of these systems that we've been in lately are slaver systems. I didn't think we were that far out. Oh no, we are. Well, I don't know about the other ones, but this one definitely is pretty far out. Mm, that's why we're close to the Batarian hegemony, probably. <laughs> the Batarian officials dismissed the idea as an irresponsible theory disseminated by counter-hegemonist subverses, and that, that should tell you a lot about what kind of government the hegemony is. We don't see a ton above them. Yes, I'm aware, game. Scans have found something. Matching a Cerberus encryption it is registered to an unknown deep cover operative. Other transmissions that match known Eclipse coded communication also detected. Yes, I remember this one. There have been no children born on Korar since the infamous pirate raid of 247 when every child on the planet was rounded up and taken as a slave. Any couple finding itself pregnant preemptively moves off world. You better hope you can afford it, I guess. That's part of the problem. That's why people don't move out of, like, you know, inner city, like, issues and stuff. Or, like, rural, like, no-go-nowhere towns. It's because they can't afford to move. They don't know if they have a job on the other side or a support system. Like, it's really different. It's a whole bunch of things. It's a socioeconomic thing. Oh, we are- yeah, I mean, I knew we were here, but yes, being close to Omega and the Omega 4 Relay, like, it's definitely gonna happen high pirate activity. I just realized I clicked on the wrong system. I think I saw like Omega Relay and was like, that's definitely Overlord. When Overlord I think is on like, I, I want to say North, but North doesn't really work in space, but on the upper end <laughs> of the galactic spiral where we were dealing with um Legion. So yeah, it's cool. It's fine. I guess I'll explore the Omega area really quick. Jeez. See, it's like 
tidbits like this too, like you read. Someday maybe I'll make a video where I, or maybe that's already out there. I need to check. I made a list recently, actually, just like a minute ago, of like videos that I what kind of want to make, but that potentially somebody else has already made, or maybe now that I've said it, somebody else will make it. But I don't know. <laughs> Nice, right, see? Like, another little, like, the Spectres came and got this guy, like, assassinated him. You know, you think, also, uh, I keep thinking of this as we run into more and more Batarian systems, like, I keep reading all of these entries, and it's like, why hasn't anybody, like, taken down the Slaver Empire? Like, the combined forces of everybody, like, Asari, at least Asari, Solarian, Turian, could take on the Batarians. Like, I know it would be, like, a costly war, and, like, you don't necessarily want to do just, like, war. But like, the, I think the, one of the reasons the Batarians left the, because they were like a, not a, like a, not a council race, but like one of, like an Elcor or Volus or the, like Hanar, like constituents, sort of, you know? Um, they were like that, having representatives on the Citadel. Um, but then they left, express it. The Quarians were kicked out after the AI incident, but the Batarians left because I think it had to do with, like, the restrictions against slaving. Um, and if you go to Omega, sometimes there's, like, an announcement you can hear where it's like, oh, and they want to crack down on our slaving again, but it's our cultural right to have slaves and try to hide it behind, like, a cultural right. And it's like, you don't get to do that. <laughs> You don't get to do that. <laughs> like, I'm, it's just, it is just, it's it's one of those things where slavery is just wrong. And you cannot, like, make an argument. You can't make an argument that it's okay. You know, I don't care if, like, your culture lets you beat women or have slaves. Like, you don't, it's not okay. And I think other people have the right to come in and tell you no. Because <laughs> I think everybody has a right to a basic, decent, dignified living. You know, you don't have to be like anything crazy, but you have basic acts like right to like food, water, and basic education, you know, like these are basic human, like basic human, basic sentient rights. So, yeah. There it is. Now we're going to the right place. This is cool. Seeing a gas giant type planet so close to the sun. This is the little. I'll just pause really quick on the entry if anybody's curious. It's just, I think these are cool, like anomalies, but they have a name. It's like extra solar. Not an extra solar cap. Shoot, what is the name? Is it a Pegasid? Maybe I don't know. I feel like there was like there's like there's like a phrase they use it when whenever there's a gas giant kind of within. Uh, what would be, um normally the rocky planet like ring you know um there's like a name where it's like it like migrated in or was like because it doesn't form there it has to be pulled in i'm pretty sure i am not an astronomer despite liking the space you know the space space stars the stars and space oh nope i don't mm -mm. <laughs> gotta stop just gotta stop i <laughs> that's not how you say it but it looks like I... It's a beautiful planet. Aite is an Earth-like world with a variety of habitable land, ranging from deserts to jungles to tundra. It also possesses faint rings, an unusual feature for a non-giant... Like a non-gas giant. Oh! You're right! Oh! That's cool! The rings contain rocks up to a meter in length and a wide dust cloud that stretches nearly 23,000 kilometers from the center of the planet. This impressive celestial phenomenon, however, is dwarfed by the fact that Aite's largest moon, Lite, is in an, in an unstable orbit and is predicted to impact the planet within the next two centuries. Knowing that any Asian venture is living on borrowed time, colonial population investment has been orders of magnitude less than other garden worlds. Yeah, capital. This whole uh, the whole system seems fairly disputed, and I don't know. It doesn't say who's colonized it. This is the correct one, right? I kind of thought they would like be extremely remote. They wouldn't be in an, on a planet that has like habitation centers. I think I've only done Overlord once, so take that for what you will. Okay, Overlord. Who do we want to bring? Well, we'll bring Thane. Shoot, maybe Miranda? Who would have... We might 
I would like to bring Legion, but having two snipers is probably not the best. It looks like your companions don't actually have any dialogue for this, so... Except maybe Le somebody asks um, something about Legion, but and then you say something about Legion, but that's it. So... Probably have had somebody with tech abilities, but I thought about bringing Samara, but because that is one of my old favorite squads. My name is Dr. Gavin Archer. The situation is urgent. We're facing a catastrophic VI breakout. I'll explain the details later, but you must retract that transmission dish. The controls aren't far from your position. You have to hurry. Oh my gosh, whose voice is that? I know whose voice that is. Is he from Dragon Age? Somebody will tell me, I'm sure, but I recognize that voice. Is he in Mass Effect? I'm so distracted now. Yeah, I think I think this squad will be okay. This is a secure facility. All weapons must. Yeah, well, that didn't go well for you. Hmm. Yeah. Wow. Okay. In a computer room on the far side of the base, there are Geth on the loose. Mm. A rogue VI program has seized control, and I've lost a lot of friends today. I'd hate to see you join them. Please watch yourself. It's Geth. This is a secure facility. All weapons must be declared upon entry and checked with security personnel on duty. We'll be this is a secure facility. All weapons must be declared upon entry and checked with security personnel on duty. Also, I did notice that I got to go to I come I came down in the hammerhead and not the normal shuttle. <laughs> Jeez. A geth invasion. I don't see any geth. He said a catastrophic breakout, too. Don't refer to VIs or even AIs by gender, usually. It's, uh, spooky. Pretty sure the cameras are compromised. This is an automated security update. Get activity has been detected. Okay. Please <laughs> they, <laughs> the freaking announcement has a geth and that's amazing. I didn't think about that, but uh, they have an announcement just for geth. How convenient. They're all 
all oh and they all have that green glow. They're definitely not like now you're dead. Jeez. This will go slightly better. Man, he's glowing freaking makes me think he's a geth for a second. Oh, he's got a flamethrower. Oh, this was a bad decision. That, I thought that was just an extra, maybe. What? Oh, okay. So this is an extra room up here. Because the map says so. That it's behind me. <laughs> that the main mission's behind me. I knew it! I, I couldn't tell in on the other ones, but I was cause I was trying in the middle of the fight to see. But they do follow you around. Oh, that's just creepy. Love that for us. Memo to all project personnel. Congratulations on your hard work. Tomorrow we make the next leap forward. It'll be a great day for Cerberus and an even greater day for humanity. Mm-hmm. This sort of a thing, I honestly think, um, like it's a bummer that nobody has apparently any dialogue for it, because Jack, I think, would have some words for this place. Another Cerberus facility, doing questionable things. And the elusive man's like, I like to keep personal oversight, but sometimes things get out of hand. It's like, mm -hmm. Oh good. Oh good. I forgot the classical music. No, I love that. Love that. Love the spooky classical music. This reminds me of Mass Effect 3. Very beginning. against shield is my locust, but that's fine. The locust is pretty good. It's just a pain to switch guns so often. Ooh, floating ammo. Attention. Satellite broadcast window is opening soon. All upload data must Ooh. be approved by your department supervisor. I think I have fortify on still. That looks cool. Oh, no, I'm sure this is totally safe. I 
I get why they have to have the retractable thing for when this rotates, but still. What? Oh my. Ah, I threw my shit. That is not where I wanted to go. I was trying to get behind it. Here we go. He blew up, that's why. Oh, I just, I tried, I didn't want to vault over the cover. I wanted to hide behind it, but I, I double clicked too soon. Contact. object that almost landed on you. She, she was like, yeah. <laughs> she was like, no, this will be fine. I'm sure that we take out the support structures and I'm sure it'll be fine. Exceeding his grasp. Come on, I'll explain. Mm. Ah? You have my thanks, Commander Shepard. You bought us some time, though probably not much. This isn't. I was like, yeah. <laughs> Show us that explanation. This is Project Overlord, an attempt to gain influence over the Geth by interfacing a human mind with a VR. Uh -huh. The results have been less than satisfactory. I'd hate to see what you call a disaster. You can't dismiss the entire project. We did succeed, at least partially. My brother, David, volunteered to serve as a test subject, but his mind couldn't handle the VI connection. He's like a virus now, infecting our networks and seizing control of any technology he finds. It's why you had to destroy the dish. Imagine if his program got off-world. How does he take control of electronics? This is a hybrid intelligence the likes of which I've never seen. 
I don't know where the man ends and the machine begins. There's interesting ramifications for this integration in the future games, honestly. Or future. What's the worst case scenario? Future game. A technological apocalypse. Every machine, every weapon, every computer could be turned against us. If he hit the extra net, who knows where it would end. You should have considered that before you started the experiment. We couldn't be expected to account for every outcome. Certainly not the abomination David has become. David, the VI has fortified itself in the main laboratory at Atlas Station. It's in lockdown now. Oh, come on, Grant. You could to pick enter, her up. You need to manually override security from our facilities in the Prometheus and Vulcan stations. How does the lockdown work? It's a fail-safe procedure in the event of an emergency. Normally, all three project leads have to agree to cancel the lockdown. I'm the only one left now. I can give my authorization, but you'll have to manually reset the other two yourself. And what happens if I have to kill your brother? Let's just hope it doesn't come to that. Is he Loghain? I don't think it's Loghain. But it might be. Tell me more about Project Overlord. We wanted to turn the Geth's religious impulse into a weapon. When we saw them following Saren, we realized they could be swayed. And if a proper figurehead was created, a virus with a face, if you will, the Geth might be controlled. Man, I wish Legion had said stuff for this. I mean, maybe the, I, don't, I doubt it. I, I doubt they would have added anything. They didn't really add much to the Legendary Edition besides like graphical upgrades and like bug fixes and stuff. But oh, the missed opportunities for this. <laughs> That's an ambitious undertaking. It would be the perfect weapon. Victory without casualties. We could avoid war with the Geth altogether. That was the plan, anyway. Well, and they thought that putting an organic and a non-organic, synthetic, non-synthetic mind together. There's interesting like horror, um, like horror, like a, like a pod, there's a podcast I listen to where there's like this, it's like a horror, it's a Magnus Archives, I highly recommend it, super, super good. But there's one episode in particular where a person witnesses the result of somebody who tried to kind of, it's supernaturally in this case, meld with machinery in a way um and all it did was create immense pain and suffering because it was like it was like it's the it says it feels like my brain is being sliced apart um i cannot think on these edges all of the edges cut me like like i was saying wait but this keeps going up but like the way that like the biologically the brain is designed is designed to operate a certain way and a computer system is similar but very dissimilar at the same time um so trying to put those two things that operate in a completely different paradigms together would only cause immense pain for the entity that can feel pain <laughs> i would imagine uh, what can you tell me about Atlas Station? Atlas Station is the main laboratory where all of our VI experiments take place. It's your final goal once you've overridden the lockdown. It's also where my brother became something else. Why aren't you there, buddy? Tell me about Vulcan and Prometheus why, stations. Why is he there by himself? Vulcan Station is our geothermal plant. It generates power for the four outposts. Prometheus Station is a crashed Geth ship full of dormant machines. We use them for our See, Tally and Legion would both have been excellent for this if, like, we just had freaking an extra dialogue. What happens on this station? This is Hermes Station, our communications uplink with the wider galaxy. If you hadn't destroyed the dish in time, the outcome would have been catastrophic. What went wrong with the experiment? David volunteered to interface with the VI to give it genuine consciousness. Theoretically, it should have been safe, but with artificial intelligence, there's no such thing as safe. Then you shouldn't have attempted it. And what if you've never attempted to find the Reapers, Commander Shepard? Where would the galaxy be then? Sometimes you have to ignore the risks. Mm, yeah, but... I mean, like, I could definitely make an argument against that, but I think we got them all. I'm heading out now. 
The other stations are all within driving distance. Best of luck, Commander. Yeah, well, thanks. Ah, my companions. Is it this thing glowing? It's like a sniper rifle extension. I don't. Or does he have? Oh, I kept changing that for Thane. I kept thinking it was like concussive blast, but it is slightly different. Well, we're gonna be not fighting organics anyway. I should probably change up my squad if it lets me. Glorified shuttle. Commander, you need to find Vulcan. Oh, I remember this. Override the lockdown from each facility. I'm gonna call this one here though. So thank you all so much for joining me. I have to do oh, I knew I should have brought somebody with tech, but it's fine. <laughs> it's fine. Um, but thank you all so much for joining me. I appreciate it. Really quick, I want to say thank you to my patrons, to all my patrons, but to especially Reese Guido, my sapling tier patron. Thank you so much for your support. And an extra special shout out to Christopher, my tree tier patron. Thank you so, so much for your support. You're the super bestest and I appreciate it. And another shout out to my other tree tier patron, Adam, who is also a super bestest. It's, it's a title now. <laughs> so thank you all. Thank you both so much for your support and thank you all so much for watching. I hope to see you in the next one.